Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man who steps into the LFA cage, coming up here on Friday night, November the 22nd. LFA 79, Michael Stack back on the program. We talked uh, a couple months ago, and you mentioned about, hey, I, I believe my next fight's going to be an LFA, and uh, I just unfortunately got delayed about a month. Uh, you know, how did that how did that alter your preparations for this fight, the fact of, you know, the fight happening, you know, 45 days after it was initially supposed to? Well, it gave me more time. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me back on the show, Jason. But, uh, yeah, it gave me more time to uh, prepare, you know, and work some things out. For the the first camp, some things had happened that kept me from training the way I'd like to, you know. And uh, so when it actually did get delayed a little bit, it worked out in my favor, I could have gone either way. I mean, if I had fought October 4th, I would have been prepared and ready to go. But it was it was nice. It mentally gave me a little bit more re- relaxation to, um, you know, go into this fight more confidently, for sure. One thing when I was looking at your opponent, Brian Mitchell, I think one of the things that while it's only a second pro fight, he had a – uh, 10, 11 fight amateur career, which I mean, a substantial amateur career when you have that amount of fights. Um, w- what stuck out to you about him when, when this fight was initially approached to you? Uh, they get, they gave me quite a few names um, for LFA when they were first showing me this fight. And out of all the guys that they gave me, there were two that really stuck out. And he was the toughest at the 145 weight class, in my opinion. So I chose to go with Brian Mitchell because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to test my skills uh, against someone that was that that I considered the the toughest fight at the time. So at, at that weight class, I, they were also looking at 155, but um, I kind of wanted to do the 145 cut right this time. You know what I mean? And. Uh, make sure that this is the the weight class that I can stay at. And as far as everything's gone so far, it's been perfect. So, in terms of, I know we talked about that last time about you know going down the forty five and 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 how has did you have to make any any big changes in, in terms of you know during camp of you know where your weight needs to be and, and things along those lines? Well, yes, uh, not big changes in the in the sense that it was something that I noticed every single day besides the fact that I'm eating differently, but we started, so I actually hired my best friend, uh, Logan Clark, who he was a bodybuilder, uh, huge into the body building scene. And he kind of pivoted over to the uh, coaching nutritional aspect of it. So I hired him and I asked him to help me with my diet this time around. And we started the diet about seven weeks out and I was you know, from the first time that I started the diet to even to right now, I've lost 11 or 13 pounds. So a significant amount just doing uh, diet manipulation. And then we're going to water load and get more, even more weight off uh, as that approaches. But yeah, it's been significantly better. Uh, energy's up, way up. I haven't mm-hmm. been lethargic or fatigued. Whereas before I was, so you mentioned uh, previously about you know hey you know there was a couple of names out there and you were looking for the difficult matchup you know there uh, there may be people in your position that wouldn't take that route is that just is it just the competitive side of you of like look I I, I want to fight the toughest you know competition possible to to show you know my abilities and also show other promoters you know the bigger promoters in this game that you're willing to take those big those are uh, tough fights. Um, you know, I don't know if it's necessary to show them or to like show myself, you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't feel good going and beating somebody that, um, I already knew I was going to beat. I wouldn't feel good telling the fans, telling the people that come to watch my fight. Yeah. He would, he, he just wasn't, you know what I mean? Of course, I don't think, uh, these guys are to my level, and of course, I think I'm going to win. But the the risk and the challenge of overcoming like an adversary that that's a tough match is is fun. I, I can't I can't really explain it, but it's kind of like a 
I, I hope it's I don't want to say it's like a pride thing, but in in a sense it almost is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you don't want to take the easy route. You want to show people that you went and overcome the hard the hard stuff because that's what people really care about anyways. You know, like no one talks about the guy who had all a bunch of scrubs. He beat a 100 scrubs then the one tough challenge that he came across he lost. Mm-hmm. You know, of course we have to be smart with our careers and think about the longevity of our careers, but um, that doesn't mean just taking the easy route out, in my opinion. You mentioned about, you know, difficulties that, you know, are going to come in a fight. What, what do you think is the biggest difficulty slash challenge that Brian's going to offer you? I think he's very athletic. He's quick. Uh, I know he's a little shorter, so I think he's going to rely a lot of uh, on his explosive movement. Um, he's probably going to do a lot of head movement. And I, I, I believe, personally, I believe that he's going to try – to uh, wrestle me and see if he can he can minimize that length that I have on him. And I know I have some power in my hands, so I, I think that's another thing that he's going to be thinking about. Uh, but in my opinion, you know, I think I'm the better striker and I think I'm the better MMA grappler and the, the better wrestler, even though he was a state champion wrestler in high school and stuff. It's a totally different game when you get to this type of uh, sport. You know, MMA wrestling is not the same as uh, collegiate wrestling. And, you know, you got punches thrown, being thrown at your face. So there's a lot to think about and damage minimization and things like that. So that's where, I, where I'm thinking how it's kind of going to go a little bit. I mean, I know keeping your range is important in every fight, but do you kind of feel like this fight, there's a little more emphasis on it because you know what you're likely expecting from your opponent? Um, honestly, not really, because I do, uh, my fight style is kind of like, I like to pressure people. I like to get in there and, uh, beat people up and, you you know, exchange. That's just kind of like the way I like to fight. I doubt that that's going to change for this because it's just kind of who I am. Um, but obviously I'm going to use every advantage that I can. And if I'm hitting him and he can't hit me, that's fine too. You know what I mean? That's perfect. So as long as, uh, as long as it goes that way, we'll see a fight, you know, you can plan for a fight all you want, but things happen in a fight that you don't, you can't plan for. And you kind of have to, you have to be on your feet in there and you have to think on your feet. So it's just one of those things. Adapt. Is that part of your training is getting in the room and just, Okay, let, let's find my let's put myself in some bad situations what, that could come up in this fight. I mean, how much of that is in the in the preparations for it? Oh, I I, I think a lot of people do that. I, I mean, for me, um, you know, I'll put myself in those situations on my own. Make sure that I can work out of them. If I'm tired, I'll tell the guy get on my back and let's work from my back. You know, if I know that he's got a good position in the gym that I've been struggling with, I'll say, hey, let's, let's run it again to get on there. You know what I mean? Because if I can't get out of it in the gym, then I can't get out of it in the ring. And the, the way I look at it is the stuff that's hard in the gym is what you should be practicing. Those are the things, the things that you don't want to do where you're getting your, your, your butt kicked. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, those are the stuff you should be, you be working on. And I'm always asking questions. I'm always interested in learning more and seeing what, well, how come, you know, how come I can't hold him down right here? And why is he getting out of it so quickly? Or why is he transitioning to this or attacking with this? And it's a being effective. And I, I kind of analyze that. And really, you know, there's a lot of thinking in MMA. It, people talk about it as a chess match. And it, it really is a chess match the angles and the the movements and the positioning they have a purpose they're tools and if you know how to use the tools correctly and transition between each tools you can be the most effective efficient fighter you know you know what i'm saying it makes me think about i was i forget who i was listening to the other day and, and they were talking about mma grappling and they and they were talking about khabib of why khabib is so good they say you know what he just sets up so many traps for you to where 
if he wants to stay on the ground with you, he will. But then also, he'll let you get up just because he knows he can take you right back down. And it's just these these very small things that happen on on how, you know, and, and obviously he was talking about the ground aspect of it, of how you're controlling someone's arms, how you're controlling someone's legs. I mean, and it kind of makes me think of what you're saying there with being very analytical of, of like, you know, putting that tape in and you pause it and you sit there and say, okay, how do I control this aspect of it? Right. I mean, it, like a chess match, you you have a certain amount of moves that you can you can play out, okay? And if you force your opponent down to a, a select amount of moves that you've already calculated and already thought of, so they have three – so say now you force your opponent to these three moves that they can do, and you're prepared – to whichever three that he chooses to react to that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So even in fighting, there's a, there's a correct way to get up without using a whole lot of energy and um, taking a whole lot of damage. You know, there's a correct way to u- do an arm bar. There's a correct way to transition. And if you understand that and you can see what your opponent has to do for their next move, you can also time that and, prepare for it you, you see what i'm saying oh i I, to, I totally get what you're saying of course uh lfa of course now on ufc fight pass this fight car will be uh air on fight pass obviously a great opportunity for you lfa debut uh get uh you know get in front of the lfa people so as always man i really appreciate time of course uh let me know they find on social media and of course anybody else you want to shout out yeah uh so you can follow me on instagram at michael stack underscore mma Twitter, it's going to be just Michael Stack MMA. And, uh, you know, I just want to shout out my team trials and my buddy Logan Clark for uh, helping me out with this diet. And thank you for having me on again, man. It's, it's always a pleasure.